This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. So, welcome to the one week unique hands on international online FTP on control system design from a beginner to an expert 2.0. And uh, today will be the revision of uh, FDP 1.0. And uh, we will discuss what has been covered in the FDP 1 briefly. And we will do some hands on practice MATLAB course for PID design as well today. Uh, am I audible? Can anyone can respond? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, okay. Thank you. Just give me a minute. I'm trying to set my phone. Okay. Yeah. So, so this will be a kind of uh, revision for the participants who haven't attended my first uh, FDP 1.0. So this will be so. Just I want to give a flavor to them what has been covered and uh, what uh, we will be discussing in the near future as well. So this particular lecture, the first I will be discussing the very fundamental of control systems and state estimation. What is the current uh, status of the control system where we are and what can be done what are the future aspects and other things this i will try to cover in 15 to 20 minutes or i can say that by seven o'clock i will try to complete this one presentation and then uh, i will go to the pid controller design uh, with hands-on experience so there i will be telling you how to design a particular PID controller for a DC motor more specifically and then I'll be telling you briefly about the LQR controller as well so the first thing is first of all uh, I thank you for attending this workshop and but uh, I am telling you upright upfront that you know this will be very tough this is going to be very tough because uh, you have to be on your toes and uh, at the same time I will also be with you I will do all kind of hand holding and everything. So it is not like the traditional uh, FDPs where one can, you know, uh, just some one way delivering at least that's the end of the FDP. It's not like that. At the end of this FDP, I want something to learn from you. Uh, at the same time, you should also learn something from me. So it is a exchange of the knowledge. And I will try my level best to provide you as much as input as possible. But at the same time, I expect the same from you as well. So it will be like lectures, as I told, 30% lectures and 70% will be the hands-on thing. Uh, 
i have recorded some of the you know to make your life easy who has just started uh, you know the research in the control systems area or or who want to explore further i have recorded uh, how to code and everything i'll be sharing you everything with you so please uh, you know bear with me and you have to and uh, first of all you know uh, apology from my side if you feel that for the next one week it will be very tough it is going to be very tough i am telling you upfront okay and one more thing if you are not happy with the way of things you can let me know by the end of the day that you are not able to cope up with me and you are not able to you know follow the lectures and it is very tough you please let me know i will refund your uh, whatever uh, uh, the fee i have collected and uh, the registration will be deactivated it is quite straight forward so but I, i hope as far as my first uh, fdp is concerned so the response was uh, very good and uh, and i think the participants have learned and i also learned from that i, I also have a very good experience so all the best so let's start the discussion uh, myself is uh, bharani chandra kumar and i am a faculty at jmr institute of technology which is located at rajam andhra pradesh this rajam is 100 kilometers from uh, visakhapatnam and if you want more details you can find uh, the my web page which is at uh, the bottom so i so we will go to directly to the state for state to the outline so this is the outline of the lecture so i will be telling you briefly about the control system what is control system and uh, what are the past and present control systems what are the classification of controllers and state estimation what is the future of controls and so on so the first uh, those who have already attended my fdps or my talks you might this is a kind of revision for you i will be uh, discussing the same things so the why controls or uh, briefly the control system is known as controls in the control community so the first fundamental question is why control system uh, there are five answers for that one fundamentally control system requirement is everywhere from the domestic applications to the industrial applications to the aerospace defense everywhere the control system is required the requirement of the control system what are the main things the first thing is the stability the second thing is performance and robustness there are hundreds of ways to tell whether the system is stable or unstable one such way is based upon the poles locations one can see the stability from the step response one can find the stability of a linear system from the gain margins and phase margins one can find the stability by giving the different bounded input and observing the bounded output there are many ways so stability is the first concern which a control engineer need to address the second thing is if the system is stable if the system is itself is stable whether the control system is required or not the answer is yes because for example very simple case if you consider the case of a dc motor it is a stable response that means if you give the bounded input uh voltage if you give the limited voltage bounded input voltage then speed will be bounded as well however why the control system is required there the answer is the performance and robustness in the open loop if the system is very slow suppose if you are reaching if you want your dc motor to act to reach the reference speed of 15 rpm and it is taking 1 minute it is stable but it is taking 1 minute so what is happening since it is taking 1 minute the system is very slow i want the speed to reach my reference value within 10 seconds and how it is possible to the controller design it is stable i am saying it is stable it is reaching it is the speed is not going to infinity or not going not crossing its bounds but it is taking 1 minute to go to 1500 rpm very slow so that's why the control system is and in some cases robustness yes your system is stable in the nominal case for example if your dc motor has some resistance component some inductance components and so on ra and la let us assume that ra equal to 1 1 ohm and la equal to 1 milli henry so whatever the controller you have designed is fine but if the parameter changes for example if the ra what you are saying is 1 has changed to 1.5 and similarly the l has changed to 1.5 so that is called as a parametric variations 
whether your system can able to handle whether in presence of the parametric uncertainties as well whether your closed loop system could able to deliver the desired performance within the desired specification limits if it is no then your answer is the system the control the closed loop system or the control system what you design is not yielding the robustness and hence one has to always ensure that you should take all kinds of uncertainties in a realistic control system design as well as all kind of uh, external disturbances the uncertainties can be internal or the external as well internal can be due to the parametric variation external can be due to the external parameters like wind or humidity temperature and so on so as a control engineer you have to design which will satisfy the robustness performance and stability so the first three point what you are saying this is once upon a time it was good maybe if you say that the three things before a decade let, let us assume in 2000 or early 2000s that is fine yes that is what the control system engineer has to do but now the situation has changed in the last decade if you see you might have the buzzwords you might have heard the buzzwords iot cyber physical systems and so on so what are they so in the earlier days all the communications happens through the wired communications all sensors actuators processors all are connected to the wires but now nobody want to do you know this wire transmissions wire data transmissions also so everything is becoming now wireless so once the wireless or some network based transmission once if that comes into the picture then the security and privacy plays a crucial role because you are transmitting your sensor information suppose you are measuring the speed of a dc motor to some sensor and if you want to send that particular sensitive speed to somewhere else through some network mode either it could be the wi-fi or private network or something there is always a threat there is always a threat that somebody can steal your data so you don't want in the normal application you don't it doesn't matter to us if somebody is stealing your data suppose the how what is the temperature of your phone it, it is not that harmful but if some sensitive data has been stolen by someone through that uh, uh, through the network then it will be very big issue so the security and privacy plays a crucial role when we communicate when you we do the communication over the network either it could be through private network or to the wi-fi or any kind of network and the next thing is humanity whether the control system is required for the humanity yes because if you see the modern healthcare technologies which combines the closed loop control system people still they are working automatic one such example or one such uh, uh, application where the control engineers requirement is necessary is the artificial pancreas or the treatment of uh, uh, Alzheimer's or so or many diseases generally what we are doing or the cancer treatment as well. mostly what we do here is even if somebody is having the diabetics so what we do we try to inject the insulin daily you know uh, whatever maybe one mg or two mg whatever it may be so what is happening there it is a kind of open loop control whether your blood level or the glucose level in the your blood is very high or low it doesn't matter you're just trying to inject you know to the medicine to the tablets or to the injection you're just trying to to you know control the glucose level uh you know doctors say that you use one tablet two tablets that's it but there is no closed loop mechanism so is it possible that continuously or sporadically if i can sense the amount of uh, you know glucose or insulin level in my body and accordingly if i give the treatment so that that makes the closed loop system still the people are doing several researches but still it is at the very initial stage so here there is a, not only the requirement of doctors or medics so it needs the involvement from the control system engineers and uh, data scientists and there are many other interdisciplinary branches as well Similarly, the COVID, the COVID, can the control engineers can do anything? Yes, they can do. What they can do, I will tell at the end. 
and the next thing is state estimation people might have heard observers estimators and all so they are all one and all the same so state estimation why one need the state estimation the first such answer is to reduce the total number of sensors suppose for your control applications if it is a very complex applications you need 50 sensors can i reduce the 50 sensor to 20 sensors the answer if the answer is yes then how obviously if you are reducing the total number of sensors for a particular application then obviously cost will be less reliability will be high weight will be less noise will be less and so on but is it possible is it possible can i reduce the total number of sensors required for my application from 50 to let's say 20 if yes then how so that's where the concept of state estimation comes into the picture the state estimation says that or the observer mechanism says that if it is possible to reduce the total number uh, if the system is completely observable then yes then i can reduce then from the outputs limited number of outputs i can estimate the complete state vector to make the things more clear you can see this block diagram so what is happening there so this is the plant this is the control system so i assume that my control system need all the state information i will i will explain this with a simple case of pressure this motor in the coming slides however the limited number of outputs is going to my state estimator along with the control i am trying to estimate the complete states for example consider a brushless dc motor which has five states three control inputs and three outputs so the five states are ia ib ic omega and theta and the three control inputs are vab vbc vca and the three outputs the meaning of the outputs here is i have the sensors so here you can see that i have only the reliable electrical sensors the mechanical sensors omega and theta are not available due to whatever be the reason so now but my controller need all the five state information that means i need ia ib ic omega and theta if my controller is based upon only the outputs then yes ia ib ic information i will take and i will design the control but what i assume that my controller is full state feedback so remaining two states are also required here so where where from where i will get the remaining two states the answer is through the outputs along with the output and inputs i will estimate all the states so that's what it is happening in this block diagram you see this is the output this is the input so i have three outputs here input is fine input is going to the plant and the uh, estimator screen from the three outputs i am trying to estimate the five states so now what what is the advantage here i have saved the cost required for two sensors i have saved the total weight because two sensors are you know weightless so uh, the weight of the two sensors can be reduced from the total weight of your closed loop system a noisy and bulky sensor if the sensors are very noisy that also can be eliminated because you have eliminated the requirement of two complete sensors so that is the purpose of the state estimation so combined control and estimation so that i am using the estimated states i am using the estimated states for the controller design so what is the lesson we learned from here why the state estimation did controller why the controller is required because i want to achieve the desired space with their desired specification so that is a part of the controller that is the purpose of the controller the second purpose the purpose of the estimator is i don't want to use all the five states for my control i have only three sensors so the remaining two sensors i am using the estimator algorithm so some people ask if i want to start my research from where should i start people say 
i don't know the good good resources to start with i will tell you one such example of uh, one of my colleagues uh, uh, whom with i have worked for the long time he is a very uh, you know he has the capability to do the good work but due to the lack of the guidance he was only going to the substandard journals or the substandard conferences and uh, though he has a capability he couldn't able to replicate or cash that uh, his capability in terms of the journals why because he has followed the substandard references or he was not aware of the good journals which need to be followed by a control engineer or the control system researcher so you can see this i to p transaction on automatic control and automatic or the top class journals in the control theory the acceptance rate is very less and it is very difficult to publish and i to p transactions on control system technology international journal of control european journal of control iit control theory and application igrnc by billy international journal of probation and non-lethal control control engineering practice Asian Journal of Control, IEEE Control System Magazine, IEEE Control System Letters, and there are many more. So these are just some of the standard journals one should uh, you know look for if you have if you are working if you in the control system area because in this latest uh, you know you can find the latest updates in the control systems uh, relevant research in these particular journals. And as far as the conferences are concerned, so these are the some important conferences, IEEE CDs. Control Decision Conference. ACC is the American Control Conference. IFAC is International Federation of Automatic Con Control World Congress, and many more. And some of the experts are Richard Murray, Stephen Boyd, Alberto Isidori, Bruce Francis, Pramod Karbonikar, M. Vidya Sagar, Linda Young, Murari, Doyle, Mayan Khalil, Masajaski, Anuradha Swami. Mohammad Daroj, Ian Foster, Wade, Davai Group, Christopher Edwards, and many more. So these are just some names who have, who have contributed in the re recent past two, three decades to the control theory and applications. So if you want to see the recent, uh, you know, updates, you can follow them. Though some of them are still, uh, some of them are still active, and some of them are not active, but still you can follow their work. You know? so these are some of the control experts whom I personally follow. You know, it is your choice to follow them or not. So any control system typical flow. Now what I'm going to discuss is typical control flow. The system modeling. The first thing is you should have the model of the system. There are many other approaches. This is the model based control. If you don't have the model, there are many approaches. So first of all, the first thing is you should have the system model in terms of the dynamical equation. I can get either from by if it is analytical system, KVL, KCL. If it is a mechanical system by using the Newton's laws, if it is electromechanical system, I will combine both of them from the physics, chemistry, biological, and from various dynamic equations, we can find the system model. The second step is you have to select the suitable sensors and actuators. The third thing is, first of all, in the simulations, in most of the you know critical applications, they directly they directly don't uh, implement on the real hardware. The first thing is they will check if they want to design some controller. First of all, they will do it in the software and they will do all kinds of tests, high fidelity tests, high, fi high fidelity simulations, including all realistic uh, scenarios in that one, all realistic kind of uh, you know noise or disturbance, what your system will face. And then they will check in the hardware in loop system, hills. Hardware in loop system is in between the simulations and the hardware real realistic application in the hardware in loop what we do is some of the elements we keep it in the software model and some of the elements we keep it the hardware for example in general the plant will be a software model the suppose if it is a math lab or something and the remaining all the interfacing through the space or uh, the remaining sensors and actuators which can be uh, used the real Sensors and actuators, which can be interconnected with the model, which is the MATLAB to DSpace or Opal RT. There are many other such uh, other RTDS mechanisms, uh, RTDS tools are available. And once if you get uh, the good response in the hills as well, then the lab scale L or prototype development they will do. The lab scale means miniaturized version. So if you if it is very big wind turbine, they will not. Uh, if it is uh, let us assume one megawatt wind turbine, 
they will not do you know direct testing on it. they will scale down it to you know 1 kilowatt and they will do all kind of test and if it uh, satisfies then they will go for the actual so that's right so then after the lab scale thing then full blown system development and testing so they will do tests under all kind of uncertainty safety reliability external uh, temperature external you know uh, disturbances everything and once that is also satisfied then they will go for the after certification and other things then they will go for the mass production so this is the standard typical flow in most of the industries for a critical control system design they do more or less they follow the same pattern and uh, this is the some of the past and present of controls so you can see this i have categorized based upon the era liapano stability theory in 1890s so the people who use the pid controllers it is nothing new about that one more than a century before people have developed the pid controllers and frequency domain nyquist and bode plots 1920s and 30s optimal control 1950s modern control theory this was the era when controllability observability and kalman filters were developed robust adaptive control adaptive control robust control and this is the you know uh, more recently you know qvhr kalman filters or control over networks and these are the present control strategies techniques what one can explore and this is a uh, one such classification which i would like to emphasize on uh, basically the first two are based upon the frequency domain and time domain which i call it as a classical control so mainly this classical control was developed uh, you know in 1950s and and uh, before we call it as a classical controls in the modern controls late 1950 onwards or early 1960 onwards whatever the tools have been developed uh, we call it as uh, 19 beyond which we call it as a modern control that thing state space pole placement lqr lqg these are all you know modern controls and the post modern controls that means which are developed in the late 80 onwards we call it as a post modern control so which includes h infinity mu synthesis and so on so this is another classification of the control which i have classified based upon the linear and the non linear and the other is robust and optimal so if the if the plant is linear and the controller is also linear then we call it as a linear control so pid lqr lqg h infinity and so on so when can i say system is linear or non linear we will be discussing soon and either if your plant or controller or non linear then we have to go for the non linear control dynamic inversion liapno based control sliding mode control and so on the third one is if your emphasis is on optimality then it is called as optimal control if your emphasis is on robustness that means your plant should work perfectly even in presence of external parametric variation parametric variation or external disturbances we call it the robust control and uh, the classification of state estimators when i say that state estimators so again linear and non linear plain wedge observer kalman filter h and f filter these are all the linear and when it comes to the non linear ekf e h infinity f and their variance variant sliding mode observers sigma filters uk pf kvhr kalman filters and their variants and many i'm not going to focus much on these all these things because that is beyond the scope of this uh, presentation so just i'm telling you what are the you know just at least when you when you listen this words uncentered kalman filter then you should recall that yes in the fdp 2.0 introductory lecture we have got, we have heard this term so these are some of the linear and non linear estimators and this is one such uh, challenging application so this is the c enduro autonomous sea uh, vehicle unmanned marine system which uh, now everyone including the defense defense and uh, the other agencies are very interested in this kind of system what is the beauty of the system is if you can see that first of all it is unmanned which is written here that means no man is involved in this one the second thing it is an autonomous the third thing is uh, it has uh, you know the capability there are three particular sources of fuel in this one so one is through the solar you can see the solar panels here the another is through the wind and the third one is diesel so one can choose in a very optimal way the combination of these three uh, energy sources 
to propel this particular vehicle. In a normal way, what one can do here is I can connect. I can connect this with uh, you know if there is no such power generation is possible. In the normal case, I will connect some electrical motor here, and I will propel that, and uh, I will have some battery batteries here. But what is the disadvantage of that one? The disadvantage is for the long endurance. Suppose if it wants to travel for 500 kilometers, you cannot carry the battery, you know, which will uh, which will give you the 500 kilometers of endurance. Or even if you're carrying, it is very heavy and expensive. The second thing is if you want to you know explore this particular if you want to explore the sea for let us say 10 days it is almost impossible for you to you know do it through the batteries another such solution is what i will do is i will connect this with a continuous power supply and the power supply will be at uh, you know offshore or somewhere else so near the seashore and stuff so if you if i want to explore 100 kilo a thousand kilometers in the sea, I should have you know around thousand kilometers of wire, which is also again not a feasible solution. But the such solution, one such solution here is it will try to generate you know whatever the required amount based upon the various uh, optimized way of using the resources from uh, from solar, wind, and the diesel. Diesel can be kept as a backup. Daytime, you know, a daytime it can use this solar panels as well as this wind and the energy can be stored in some batteries and it can be utilized at night or whenever there is lack of uh, you know uh, lack of direct sunlight or so on otherwise if nothing is working then i will use the diesel diesel can be kept as a backup. So this is one such solution so why that where is the control system required the control systems are required at various points optimal control is required to allocate the control surface the, allocate the control allocation the control uh, inputs accordingly from the three sources optimally the tech, the second thing is the robustness is my this vehicle is robust to the sea waves there are sea waves here as well right so for the high sea tides also it should be able to propagate how do i do that much? that is a control problem so this is another uh, interesting uh, autonomous undersea vehicle so this is completely a solar uh, you know solar based uh, uh, vehicle so this will charge in the daytime and uh, you know it will propel it will do all the operations during the night time whatever the bag whatever it has been charged uh, then based upon that uh, you know uh, it will charge the battery and it will work. Like so this is a uh, lit little bit less complex as compared to the earlier one earlier one you are, you are getting the you know there are three energy sources but here only one energy source so this is the future of the controls. What are the future of the control? So network for complex systems. So first of all, the modeling. The modeling of the traffic condition or air traffic control, which is very, very much, much, uh, you know, requirement for the current scenario. So because we don't have, we cannot have the deterministic model. We can, we should have the stochastic model. How to build for the traffic, whether it could be the ground traffic or the air traffic. Communication over networks, so cloud computing or big data analytics or machine learning is one such where since we are transmitting all the data to you know through the network. So if the data is very large, if the data is very large, then how to handle that one? So that's where the big data big data analytics or ML or cloud computing comes into the picture. And uh, the second and third are the second and third are interrelated. In the third one, interconnection with internet or actuator sensors or process to any network based either to the internet or any such things. The fourth one is security and privacy, which I already discussed. Fault tolerant controls. So if some faults, you know, if there is if one of your sensor is faulty, you're using three sensors for, for our prestigious motor if you assume three current sensors. If one of them is faulty, then what you will do? If two of them are faulty, what you will do? If all of them are faulty, then what you will do? So fault can are inevitable. So it can come from anywhere, you know, from the manufacturer defects or you know due to the due to the environmental factor. Anything can happen. The whole world is uncertain. How do you deal that? One? If the humans are in loops, if the humans are in loop, then what is going to happen? Smart, very smart grid or super grids generally. So this is a combination of AC and DC grid. Smart cities, stock market control. 
So there also the control system requirement. There is a control system requirement. Suppose if you are pumping some kind of reference amount of money, always you expect the money to grow. So what is the control mechanism? Fully autonomous vehicle. Now everyone is investing crores of rupees in this one. Whether it could be you know BHEL or Uber or Mahindra or everyone is interested in the autonomous vehicles. Healthcare applications, diabetic, cancer, Parkinson, etc. And the last one is I think not visible. So so this COVID-19. So COVID-19, how the control engineers can contribute here is is it possible? For the control engineer to suggest the lockdown period based upon the past history of susceptible infected disease, infected persons, deaths, and so on. Can I can I come up with some optimal strategy which will tell my government that you have to keep lockdown for these many days and so on? So in this area, research is going on. It's a very new area. People are working in Italy, US, China, everywhere on this, uh, you know, the control, the control as well. And I think recently they are, there is a journal, they have called the papers as well for the COVID-19. I think it was a journal of Franklin Institute or IAC Transactions. I think IAC Transactions has recently, uh, last week itself, they have called for the papers uh, which, which required the control system involvement for the COVID-19 modeling, treatment, so, so that is the summary and uh, this is one such reference where you can find uh, the things what I have discussed and these are some of my collaborators with whom I have collaborated I have collaborated uh, in the recent past there are various people to thank with uh, Know, the faculties from my IT systems, my master degrees from where I did my PhDs, my postdoc, and these are some of my collaborators with whom I have published at least one of the papers. And my sponsors, again, I have to thank my sponsors uh, who have supported, who has funded at various stages. You know, MHRD, UK, European Union, uh, Framework Point Seven. Become Sarabai Space Center, Department of Science and Technology. So I should thank for funding my work in the last uh, one or one and a half decade. So that's it. So that is the brief introduction for you to the controls and so on. So I will take a couple of questions now. If you have anything genuinely, if you want to ask anything in this presentation, don't worry about the slides. Everything I will share with you at the end of the lecture. So if you have any quick questions, then you can ask, otherwise we'll go to the next part. Anyone? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I will take a couple of minutes break, and after the break, I will we will start the control systems design, how to from the scratch, how to design and uh, and other things. So we will. Uh, I will start my discussion uh, from the scratch. Like right? I will first of all, I will consider a nonlinear model, and what is that nonlinear model, and how to how to define or how to design the PID controller and LQR control will be our next topic. So just give me a couple of minutes break. You also can take now it is around seven seven. Exactly at seven ten we will meet and we will start the next topic. So so just three minutes break.
so welcome back so now we will be discussing some theoretical aspects of classical and modern control design which involves uh, the pid controller design pole placement lqr and lqg i'll briefly go through this one but at this stage you don't have to do the simulation for all those things we'll go with the pid controller design and i will tell you what to do for the lqr in the next class so these are the some this is the outline of this talk so the control designs the control designs what i will be going to discuss is uh, the pid controller pole placement lqr and lqg so this is a very fundamental block diagram of the control system very simple very basic pid controller but uh, in the realistic cases you will not see this simple pid controller because you'll be having the actuators sensors and lots of other complex blocks so fundamentally the control input in the time domain the control input u which is going to the plant the system what we have considered is uh, let us assume just this motor and this could be your digital pid controller if you are implementing through you know any digital controllers and the output is you know for example in the very simple case the speed output you which which you are measuring using some speed sensor and the reference value you are comparing and whatever the error is getting generated the error has been given to the pid controller and the, and finally the pid controller try uh, uh, outputs the current input to the plant so this is a very fundamental fundamental control input so u of t kp ki kd so pid stands for proportional integral and derivative you can see that the error is proportional uh, the control is proportional to the error so that's why it's proportional term in addition the controller is proportional uh, is the integral of the error so integral action and the control is again a function of derivative of error so derivative so this pid is coming into the picture and if i convert this into uh, if i convert this into the laplace or s domain by using laplace transform assuming that zero initial conditions and so on so u of s is kp plus ki by s plus s into kd into u of s the three proportional gains kp ki kd so if anybody says that i am designing the pid controller anyone so what the great thing they are doing the great thing what they are doing is they are trying to find the three values kp ki kd and uh, uh, let me share you some of the experience of the fdp one so one faculty has told me that you know for the past one and a half year he was struggling to get this kp ki kd values for his particular application there are some small tricks which i will tell you which will make you which will ensure you that you can tune the pid controller in one minute i am telling you in one minute after this particular talk 90% or 95% of the system if you have the model linear model transfer function or state space model it will take only one minute for you to get the desired response and i will tell you how to do that one by the end of this lecture you should be able to do that one also so the idea since that participant was not knowing that it is there are some tricks in all it in that one he has wasted his one and a half year of time and after immediately the the fdp he could able to do that it in 5 minutes and he was very happy but the only uh, what was his sorrow is that if you would have been known this trick before one and a half year he would have saved one and a half year of time. there are many fancy ways to design this pid controller i am telling you many fancy ways the eventually whatever be the way you do your ultimate aim is to get the kp ki kd value which will be the desired response the fancy way of getting this kp ki kd value is by using so called soft computing techniques either it could be fuzzy genetic algorithm neural network or so called heuristic algorithms like particle form optimizations or uh, firefly or but there are many such uh, things which i don't want to discuss but eventually what you are going to do there so whatever with the controller you design you will only be getting kpk kd values only three set of values 
which I will tell you how to do that. So that will be the takeaway of this lecture. If anybody is interested in performing the research or doing the research in control system, then you should be aware of this particular one minute solution to this one. So before going to the simulations or hands-on part, I will tell you very simple way. So what are, why the PID controller is required? So in most 90% of the industrial controllers are PID controllers or more specifically PA controllers. Out of the 90%, again, the 90% are only P and I. David controls people very seldom use if it is required. Otherwise, for the practical purposes, you have to avoid the derivative action. So you can see that proportional controller, when I say that proportional controller only, the meaning here is integral action and derivative actions are zero. So that means if I make K I and KD equal to zero, so my U of T, my control input which is going to the plant is directly proportional to the error. So that's why the name proportional control. What, what are the good things about zero? I'll wait until the Vimala Kumar, could you please mute your phone? Okay, thank you. Vimal, could you please mute your phone? May I request you to mute? Otherwise, I'm muting from my side. I am muted. Thank you. So, it improves the rise time, but the steady state error cannot be guaranteed. What do you mean by the steady state error here? In a very simple way, steady state error means suppose if you want your DC motor, the reference speed of 1500 RPM you want, everything is stable, everything is fine. But use a proportional controller, instead of the 1500, it might settle at 1400. So the 100, whatever you're seeing, the band is called as a steady state, steady state error. You can convert it to the percentage and so on. So instead of 1500, if it's going to 1400, then we call that steady state error. It's not zero. So proportional control alone cannot ensure that the steady state error of your system goes to zero. Unless if your system has some inherent integral action. In it. Otherwise, proportional control alone cannot give you the steady state error. It improves the rise time. That means it will make a system fast. But steady state error, cannot you cannot make it zero. So how do you make it the steady state error zero by using by adding the integral action with it? So that's what the PI controller. In the PI controller, the KP and KI are non-zeros. Only the KD is zero. So you can see what is happening here is integral action eliminates the steady state error. If you design a proper PID PI controller, it will ensure that if you want your system to go to 1500 RPM then this integral action if you choose an appropriate pi value along with the kp value then it will ensure that the steady state error will be zero but however if you use the integral action alone you can say that yes if my steady state my aim is that the steady state error should go to zero i will use only integral action that only the ki not the kp but that is not preferred because as soon as if you are using the integral gain it will give a sluggish control buildup that means it will make your system little bit slow. So the idea here is, if you use the PI controller, it will improve the rise time and the zero steady state error. So the PI controller can be used if, used if you want to have improvised rise time and the steady state error. You don't need the derivative action if you are if your purpose is only these two things. So the next thing is which is, which is very dangerous one, so the derivative action. Though it is important, but it is dangerous in several aspects. Why it is dangerous, we will see. Uh, one such combination, another such combination is PD controller, where we are assuming that KI equal to zero. That means due to some inherent activities or some due to the inherent mechanisms inside your system, uh, the steady state error already there is an integral action, or you don't want uh, the steady state error to go to zero. So if there is some applications are like that then what you want to do, what you want to use is PD. So the derivative action, what you do is you try to predict the futures. 
it improves the closed loop stability if you use uh, the derivative action it will improve the closed loop stability however the physical realization is very difficult almost impossible if you use the derivative action alone you can see that if i take the in, if i take the laplace transform of this derivative action then what is going to happen laplace transform of d by dt is nothing but s into e of s the physical realization is very difficult so to avoid that one so instead of this s into kd they use tau s plus 1 this tau is a time constant which need to be tuned based upon the requirement so the good thing about this one is it improves the stability and faster response but the bad thing is one has to avoid this derivative control as much as possible because it will amplify the noise so if your system is some noise then the derivative control will obviously amplifies the noise so the pid controller is the combination combined benefit of proportional integral and derivative if you want your system to have improved write time use the proportional if you want your system error steady state error to go to zero or minimum you go you use the integral if you want to improve the closed loop st uh, stability then increase uh, then use the derivative if you want all three of them use the pid controller but the caution is that you should avoid the derivative control as much as possible if it is not required don't use for your realistic uh, applications i have considered a very simple example i have considered a very simple example you can see that it is a second order system because there are two poles type zero system because no poles are at origin numerator is is only one so it is a constant so three controllers i have selected sorry the proportional controller as 3 the integral controller as 1.5 and the derivative controller as 100 so this i have just uh, did some simulations which i will be showing you how what is happening and it is obvious if you use only the proportional control what is the lesson what we learned what we learned that the steady state error will not go to zero that we will see if you use the pi though the steady state error will go to zero but system is little bit slow if you use the pid then you can see what are the improvements so once again i am repeating this is my plan first i will design the p controller then pi and then pid control and then i will see you i will show you what is going to happen so this is the response so this is the response if i use only the p controller proportional controller so you can see that the write time is 0.823 the peak overshoot is 16% settling time is 4 but the main concern is the steady state error is not there for example if i want if i don't care about if my application doesn't need the steady state error to go to go to zero simply i will go with p controller proportional control it is very simple only one gain you attribute one some amplifier you can keep it so that will you know give the amplified but i want to make this error as zero steady state error as zero then what i am going to use is pi controller if i use the pi gains what i have shown there you can see that there is a sluggish nature sluggish means bit bit slow you can see that if i use l on p 0.823 but due to the integral action little bit slowed it slowed the response and peak overshoot is not much variation settling time is also increased due to the sluggish nature of the integral action but the steady state error is zero that is also good and i have designed a pid controller so you can see that the good thing about that the write time is the least you know the write time is the least but there is a very slight marginal increment in the overshoot as compared to these two things you can see that and settling time is also fine there is not much variation it is in between these two but the steady state error is zero so if my requirement is that if my requirement is that i want the write time as 0.75 then i will include this particular pid controller if i say that my requirement is steady state error is zero and peak i can have little bit uh, you know relaxation on the write time then i can go for the pid controller. if i don't care about uh, the steady state error then i will go only with p i will i will show you this with a very simple code i have to share my screen i think this 
Stop my screen where that I will share my complete my entire application. Yeah, this is the small bit of code what I have written. It may not be visible to you, but uh, I will tell you, you know, if you zoom it, then only you can see that one. This is the plant what I have considered. And uh, this is a proportional controller where I assumed that integral action and derivative action is zero. So don't worry about this one. This is a small simulation, a tiny simulation of that one. But I will run this one and I will show you the results what I have shown. So three sets of results I'll be getting, one with the proportional controller, the another with the, the PI controller, and the third one is with the PID controller. So the three results have generated. First, we'll control the proportional and integral, and then we will see the third one. I think there is some problem with the sharing. I will share my complete screen now. OK. So at the first instant, this and this looks very similar, isn't it? But what one has to see here is, one has to see here, this is with a proportional controller and this is with the PI controller. This looks very same. If you if you don't carefully, if you, if you carefully see this one, you can see that it is starting from zero and it is going to the maximum value of 0 0.9 and it is settling at around 0 0.75. I want it to settle at 1. The step input is my reference input. I want to set it 1. But it is not set. That's what we have learned from the proportional controller. When I use the integral controller, you can see that you know, over the time, it has settled at 1, exactly at 1. So the steady state uh, you know, is almost uh, 0. If you want, if I will show you the characteristic as well, I'm interested in setting time and other things. Uh, steady state error. So you can see here the thing what I have shown there. The final value is 0 0.75. But what I want, I want it to go to 1. So what does this mean? This means that there is a steady state error of 0 0.25 or the 25% in terms of. This. And you can see here that this is a PI controller. The final value has gone to 1. So what, what does this teach us? This teaches us that proportional control alone in the absence of inherent integral action cannot make the steady state error as zero, whereas this has PI controller as well. So you can see that CL underscore P means proportional, CL underscore PI means uh, PI controller. Uh, but if you see the rise time here, 0 0.823, it will have a little bit sluggish rise time. You can see this one. So what is happening here, rise time 0.823, and there is a compromise here that the rise time has a little bit increased. And this I'm telling you that it is a very naive PI controllers. If I keep on changing the PID values, then this response, you know, the parameters, the specifications, those specifications will change. And now I will compare this with my PID controller, the third one. So this is the PID controller. So it is showing only PI, but it is the PID controller. So final value is one. But you can see that the rise time of PI controller is 0 0.906. However, for the PID controller, it has come down. So you can see the improvement. So it is PID controls a bit fast. But again, if I see in the frequency domain, if I inject the noise in the system, this you know that will have the different results. In the nominal case, it is fine. So what is the learning experience if the closed loop stability has been improved if I use the PID controller? 
if i want there is some compromise or trade off in the rice time and if i can trade off a little bit give the trade off then i will go for the trade so this is what uh, we have learned from this exercise this is very simple tiny example you know very test book standard test book example so this is the comparison so the first question comes into your mind how do i get this pid values how do i get this p value how do i get pi value and how do i get this pid value so the convention so the conventional way of tuning the method uh, tuning or getting the pid pid tuning means nothing it is getting an approximate kpk kd value or the kpk uh, values which will give you the desired result you can see that the conventional method jiggler nichols tuning method it is nothing but uh, disconnect the feedback loop only keep proportional gain and remove the integral assume that uh, make it ki and kd is zero and keep on increasing the kp value unless until your output is oscillatory response and at the point for the corresponding value of k for which you are getting the oscillatory response is called as a critical gain and the time period of that oscillation is called as a critical time and there are some standard formula based upon the critical gain and critical time you can get the kpk in values that is one way of conventional we have uh, tuning the second way is tuning based upon optimization methods as i told you know you can use various optimization methods where one can the aim is to minimize the uh, uh, kpk uh, the error you know the output error or control error whatever it may be you can use uh, optimization methods uh, based upon fuzzy logic neural network genetic algorithm pso tblo and uh, there are hundreds of methods which you cannot do and or based upon so jiggler nichols or any such uh, tuning method will give you some initial values but sometimes you have to you know manually fine tune that one so these are some of the you know thumb rules so like for example if you want if you are increasing this ki then steady state error can be eliminated if you increase the kd value small decrease in uh, rise time so these are all trade offs these are all again interdependent on each of uh, these parameters the response is completely interdependent of kb k kd values this is some some rules what and things and the next thing is matlab auto tuning so this is the one which is which is very much required for the researchers who are, who are you know who want to design the pid control in a minute so this auto tuning works in 90% of the cases 90 or 95% of the if you assume your system is linear and not much complex algebraic loops are there then this is this will work and it will take you only one minute and if the pid gains are not unique uh one should remember that this pid gains are not unique that means you may get one set of kpk kd values and i may get another set of kpk kd values for a given desired specification for example if you want zero state steady state error peak overshoot is zero settling time is less than 1 second rise time is less than 0.5 second suppose if your K, kpk K, kd values might be 0.1 0.2 0.3 whereas if i design my own way i can get the same response with different set of values maybe 1 2 3 or so on so that tells that pid gains are not tuning there are zillions of combinations of kpk kd values to get the desired response so so you don't think that there is one only one set of kpk value which will give me the which will give us the desired response there are hundreds or zillions of such combinations so what i will do is i will restrict my discussion to the pid controller here next i will go you i will show you how to design the pid controller for a very simple system first of all how to build a system and then how to design a pid controller for that and then you have to work hands on work uh, you have to do the tuning and other things based upon the lecture so that i will give you half an hour time please bear with me i will be today we have to you have to be with me till 9 o'clock i'm telling you if anybody is want to leave in between you are free to go but my complete lecture will end at 9 o'clock so at the end of the 9 o'clock i expect all of you to design a pid controller of a given system in one minute so that should be the take up i know that your time is very much precious at the same time my time is also precious if you are attending my lecture i i generally ensure that it is not the wastage of your time so i appreciate your time i value your time so at the same time i want you to learn as well 
So, so forget about this pole placement controller, which uh, LQR and other things we'll discuss later. But I will restrict my discussion to the PID controller. So if you have any quick questions, a couple of quick questions I will take. If you have any quick couple of questions, you can ask me regarding till now what we have discussed. If not, then I will go to the hands-on things and how to do and what to do. I will tell for a simple DC motor. Sir, just now you have uh, Hello? Uh, shown one uh, MATLAB yeah. file uh, program for uh, PID, yeah. sir. Can you explain that code if yeah. possible? Okay, I will explain you in a minute. I will copy that in the PowerPoint and I will enlarge you so that you can see that. I will show you that one. I will give you this code as well, not today, maybe tomorrow day from now because I want you to explore this first. Hello, sir. Can I ask a question? Sir, Hi, yes. sir in, the, in the graph, you have uh, seen lifetime peak overshoot. How to get that from the graph, sir? I will, tell you, I will, tell you. I will show you. I will show you everything. Just give me a minute. So this is very clumsy. I will make it 20. Oh, sir, can you ask a question on state estimation? Yeah, sure. sure. Yes. Meanwhile, yeah, yeah, this is Satya from. Yeah, this is yeah. Satya from IIT Bhuneshwar. Uh, I have actually yeah. posted the question in the chat box. Uh, uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, what is the uh, what we say? Uh, what is the parameter for deciding whether your estimation or your observer design is reliable or not? In terms of, uh, we can say accuracy. In terms of, uh, there are there are many such parameters. What one has to see. The first thing is generally. What people they see is minimum mean square error MMSC. So your minimum mean square error MMSC or the square of the error should be the minimum. The second thing is it should be reliable. That means the error between the state and state estimation should go to zero asymptotically. Asymptotically means as time goes to zero, then your error should also go to zero. So there are many such uh, definitions which will tell us about the reliability. The second thing is that for the realistic system, the reliability comes from various tests. Suppose if you do the testing now, your system, uh, the estimator, and if you are doing the you know, test tomorrow, you should get the similar response. In, so that's why your estimator design should also be robust to the parametric method, and it should be reliable. So you change the plant parameters uh, from you know, whatever the values, and keep the observer gain constant, and see whether your system is reliable to that uncertain parameters. So that, that all these aspects will cover in the coming lectures in very detail. So that is the such. Yeah. So, this so is, is, the, like, is it like? I, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So is it like right. saying about reproducibility of? Sorry. Uh, is it like? Uh, no, no. You said the last point. That is it like the reproducibility of the mm, system? Like. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, it should it should work reliability. Yeah, it should suppose if you are doing today, if the hundred times if you do, you should get uh, you know the error. You know, you not get the, always the error uh, zero, but uh, you know it should be in the tolerable band. That's what generally we do in the instrumentation, right? Reliability analysis various times. If you if you run the systems under various conditions, it should be reliable at various times. So here the parameter is time. What I discussed at various time. Time maybe today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, it should work. So your system is reliable with respect to the time, with respect to the aging factor, with respect to you know various other parameters as well. So the good thing about the estimation is if you don't have the limited sensors, then you don't have to worry about the sensors. Like right? here we have eliminated uh, the mechanical sensors, the position and speed sensors. Since those two sensors are there, so your system is obviously a kind of liable because it's not depending. It is only dependent on the three sensors, not on the five sensors. So you don't have to think about the uh, the mechanical sensors. So it is a kind of inherently reliable. Your closed loop system is inherently reliable, provided your estimation is good. Okay. So I am going to the next part. So somebody has asked to explain this PID controller. So this is the you know close all, clear all, CLC. This will 
close all figures, it will clear all variables, and it will clear the workspace and so on. So this is the transfer function. Sir? Sir? Yeah. Yes. Sir, I am Basirani. Sir, how will you choose yes, yes. KPA KD value in MATLAB? I, Did uh, you Madam, uh, yes, so, is there, sir? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let Let me explain you. So this whatever the KPKD KD values we have taken, it is just by trial and error method. But how to get this KPK value for a desired response? I'll be you know we will so be discussing in, in next. Half. Okay. Uh, madam, please wait. Madam, please wait till the okay. next half an hour. By the end of the half an hour, I will tell you how to get this KD values for all okay, types sir, of response. Thank you. Yes, okay, sir. Yes. In next half an hour, at the end of the half an hour, you'll be able to learn, you'll be able to do on your own. Okay. So this is one such uh, why why I have taken this example is just to show the importance of uh, the proportional gain PA controller and PID controller. So this is very simple and very textbook problem. However, when you go for the realistic, how to get this KD controller is a question of interest, which we will be discussing in, uh, in another half an hour also. So. As I told, this will be the transfer function of one numerator one x square plus two s plus one. So this will give us the plant. This is a proportional controller. This percentile symbol will is just for the comments. And as I, as I told, the proportional gain I have considered as three since this is only the proportional. What I am doing here is integral zero, derivative zero. PID controller equal to PID. There is an inbuilt command PID. So what it is doing is based upon this KP, KI, KD value. And uh, this is some time constant. This is the tau what uh, we have. Just forget about this tau. What is this? I will tell you this under. So this P control is my proportional control. So CL underscore P. So this is the closed loop. Uh, you know, my battery is going to drain. So this is closed loop uh, control. So what is happening here is feedback. So I am I am creating the feedback, the series of uh, the controller as well as plant. Control and plant and comma one so negative feedback by default. So this is the example of the proportional controller. In the integral controller, what I am going to do here is, and then I, I will be plotting the step response. I should have kept this plot one. Okay, so now I'll be plotting figure one step of CLP. So this is the closed loop plan and this 10. So what I'm saying that I want only till say 10 seconds. So this will give us the first plot. So for the PI controller, what I'll be going to do here is everything the code will remain the same instead of KI one value. Instead of zero, I will substitute some value what we have seen. In the PID controller, these two parameters will not be zero. So that's what is going to happen here. In the PI controller, proportional gain is three, integral gain is 1.5, and the derivative gain is zero. So PI controller I have defined, PID of KP, this code will remain the same. Only the thing is automatically it, is, it will take the values from here. So it will take the value of KI so what, from 1.5. What is yeah. hundred, sir? Sorry? What is 100? What is? This is the time constant. I will tell you about them. Yeah, this is a time constant. I will tell you the importance of this one. Let me first complete this one, then I will I will answer this question. And CL underscore PI. So this is a feedback, uh, you know, the series of uh, uh, PI controller with the plan. And uh, I'm just plotting the, the closed loop response of with the PI controller. And this PID controller. So PID underscore control is PID controller KP KA KD value. And uh, this is the feedback. So this is the third one. So this should be PID, not PI. So this should be PID. CL underscore PI. If I have to write it D here and the same D here. The response will be the same because it will change. Okay. So this will give the three particular figures. So the first one is what you have seen. So if you run this code, you will be getting the three responses. So this is the by default the step response. I think it has not yet appeared. So if you right click, if you right click, and then the characteristics, if you see, it will show by default the peak response, setting time, rise time, steady state error. And if you want to grid it, you grid and various options you can use. Okay, so this 
this is about the code yeah so is this is clear so uh, again i'm yes, telling sir. you this Thank what you, i did is is uh, this code is just i have taken some values of kpk kd value this is not the tooled one because if i want my system to be setting time to be 0.001 then i have to use uh, uh, different uh, pid values so but uh, since i don't uh, i have the tuning is not the purpose the purpose here is just to see uh, the performance of uh, the kpk kd values yeah uh, yeah so now coming back to your question what is this uh, 100 there is that there is my this one okay i have not shared my screen let me share my screen yeah somebody has asked that what is uh, this uh, 100 so if you remember I have discussed, I have told you that for the PID controller design, if you see this, this is the PID controller design for the realistic implementation. So this tau is coming into the picture. You can see this, this tau. This tau is basically the time constant, what you have to consider. This tau is again, you know, uh, is a tuning parameter. It's not really a tuning parameter. Automatically you can take, this doesn't have much implications provided unless you are taking it is very large as this. so 100 is the standard one the default is 100. is it clear now so this is for the realistic uh, implementation implementation of the derivative control sir what is tail sorry sir, sir please take the question and continue the session just please one one at a time one at a time please. sir please continue the session sir, and take the questions at the end yeah yeah fine yeah so okay so now the next topic what i'm going to cover is uh, how to develop a model how to develop a model non-linear model in a matlab using the embedded function and then i will uh, tell you how to do the simulation so just give me a couple of minutes of break so it is around 751 sharp at 759 we will meet again where we will be uh, please be ready with the matlab in front of you and uh, we will i will tell you how to build a particular Non-linear system model of a DC motor. Okay, so give me just uh, three minutes. So 7:55 will meet. Another four minutes. In three to four minutes.
okay welcome back so so we'll be discussing now the first step in any of the control system design that means if you have the model ready how do you do? so this i will start with uh, an i to paper so actually i will i will give you the video as well how to run this one so this is basically the text of that video uh, in this video or the lecture we will learn how to build a simulink dc motor model on the mathematical equations and i have taken uh, the mathematical equation from this uh, itp transactions on industrial el electronics 45 this is the reference if you want to see the details you can see that one so there are two states current and the speed input is the voltage output is the speed so this is a very simple second order dc motor model uh, where there are two states input voltage and the output speed and uh, these are the state equations so you can go through the reference what we have uh, seen so lda by dt equal to this is uh, the first state equation first state this is the second state if i rearrange this one that means this r will go in the other side i have represented di by dt as i dot and d omega by dt as omega dot so this i dot i omega v by l this v is the input omega dot equal to this one so <coughs> sorry so now whether the system is linear or non linear obviously the system is non linear due to, due to the two particular factors the one factor is x1 into x2 this is the combination the product of two states that means it will not satisfy the principle of superposition and homogeneity so that's why this is this but due to this particular factor it is non linear and uh, due to the x1 square i think it is not visible let me uh, so this x1 square this x1 square which is in the red so due to this particular you know x1 square also you know your system is non linear so i have the non linear model if i want to represent in matlab so this is the embedded simulink block diagram so dc motor non linear model i am not doing any linearization of this thing so uh, my purpose is to represent these two non linear equations in simulink so what i assume that for the time being i assume this this low torque is zero just for the very simplicity i assume this this low torque is zero so what this v is the input so to the dc motor what are the inputs going to the dc motor the one input is going is the low torque which i assumed as zero the another main input is the voltage so system is two states and uh, output is x2 dot we'll see what is that one so you can see that you know but what for the plant what are the things required for the plant again you you need the x1 and x2 because the two states from the plant is in so this is my block diagram so if you see my block diagram here this i dot i am getting this i dot what is inside i will show you if i integrate this i dot i will get as i why this i is required because i is required for the first equation and the second equation as well and omega dot if i am integrating omega dot i will get the omega from here and what i am doing here is both i and omega is required for the plant tl low torque i assume is zero and just i am giving some open loop control as one and the scope is to see the response so this is a small tiny code what i have uh, written here so these are my two states so r l whatever the parameters here is required is written here i dot is something like this the non linear states again the last things are not visible so there are two non linear states which i have written from here i dot and omega dot so what is this code it is doing the code required the control input which is nothing but voltage the code is required uh, the inputs are required as low torque and again the two states if these are required to build this thing so output will be i dot and omega dot so that's what we can we have seen here so the input there are four inputs going control tl i and omega output as i dot and omega dot 
the same thing you can see here the inputs four inputs control low torque i and omega outputs of this function will be i dot and omega dot i dot and omega dot i'm writing from here and this is my simulating things and if i you know do this one then i'll be getting something like this but how to do and the outputs response will be like this this is my current and this is my speed so if i you can see the current and speed here and if i run this code you will be getting this one so this is quite straight forward however this is very important and first step to develop any control systems so frankly speaking if you couldn't able to to do this uh, you know the simple thing now it will be very difficult for you to go to the next lectures so what i will do you is how to do that there is i have recorded this one is around 10 minutes of video so i will give you this uh, 10 minutes video now i will share in the whatsapp group i will share this ppt as well and develop the code for this one so if you see just give me a one minute i will explain you in one minute i will explain you how to do this one and then anyhow the detailed explanation you can see in the video which i will be sending now which i have recorded so i will just give me a just be with me for one minute i will show you the basic blocks from where to select and how to select okay so now i am ready let me share my screen i will share the complete screen okay okay so the first thing is we have to open the simulink one so various versions of uh, matlab will have various uh, you know gui but more or less everything will be the same more or less uh, you know uh, they it will be the same so this is the simulink what i have to select so if you select this one uh, you can see here slx but in some cases you know it will be mdl if you are using the older version so this is the new one black model or the new model you can select it because lots of applications are running so my system is bit slow so this creates the new untitled one so what are the things required if you see from this particular diagram if you see from this particular diagram i need the embedded block embedded function block i need a two integrators i need a scope i need another two workspace to save the variables time and two constants so how to select that one i will tell you now in a minute so this go here and go to the continuous because i need two integrators so this is the integrator add a block i need uh, the constants go to the source so the constant here if you can't able to find out uh, these uh, variables the easy way is here if you type here whatever you can see the search box it will show you the corresponding next i want the embedded one which is the heart of this one go to the user defined one in some versions it is written as embedded functions add or you can just dra drag and drop here as well and i need a uh, sync to see the output scope i will use i will use to work for some variables and uh, i need uh, i will see whether it is required or not so these are the things required so now if you see this one i will split my screen into two most of you might be aware of this thing but since this is very fundamental thing which is required some people may not be i will double click this one so this yellow one what is there is, is nothing but this one so i will double click so before double uh, yeah i will double click this one so it will open by default as function this one u equal to you know function but what are required inside this one this is the tiny things. so this whatever the fancy things you are seeing this i have just uh, you know for commenting other purpose so i need two outputs here so the two outputs will be you know i underscore dot omega underscore dot and closing this one this function i'm just writing you know 
DC motor underscore model and input. What are the inputs required? Four inputs required, right? That's what we have seen here. The first one is control. The second one is uh, T into L. The third one is I. The fourth one is omega. So these are the four inputs what is required. And remaining code, I will not type the code, which uh, you can see from the PDF what I will send. Just I'm writing by default. Because I need some output as a function of something. If it's some function, just simply I will write it as a function for the simplicity. But uh, you, you have to type the code there. Uh, I'll be typing. Okay. So now here, I dot and omega dot, you have to substitute whatever the values here you are saying. Before that, we had to give the parameter values. So this is given here. This code. So this I'll be giving you the sharing you. So you just type here and connect all the blocks. Connect all the blocks. So now you can see that those blocks have become different. Since I have given four inputs, so four inputs has come here. So you can use the four inputs, you know, if they're constant, so side. So So this is one constant, the control input, you can type here whatever you want. And this is the load torque. I assume that this load torque is zero. You know, you can set it as a zero. And since I dot you are getting, if you integrate I dot, you'll get the I. So I'll be using this I from here. And uh, again, I will copy one more here. I'll give this as a feedback here. You can this as here. And you know, if I want to see the outputs, if I want two outputs, double click and you can select select two different uh, parameters. And this is the way to, you know, since I want two input ports, and uh, I will connect. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Okay, so now if I feed all the code inside this one, so this is this will be the as good as the one what you are seeing. Yeah, so this is the way to build uh, you know the open loop control. So this is the block diagram. So now I will give you fifteen minutes of time. And now it is 8.10. I will send you the video recording as well, what, how to do this one. And I will send you this PDF as well in a couple of minutes. And then you should be able to replicate these results. And if you run this one, you will be getting the results. So in another 15 minutes, I will, you know, we will, we will discuss. And then I will tell you how to design the PID control. This is the open loop control. And then I will tell you the PID controller design in one minute, how to design, how to get the PID values. And then uh, that will be the end of the session. So we will meet at 8, 10 approximately at 8.25. In a couple of minutes, I will send you the, both the, you know, I will not give you the code. The first and foremost thing is, please don't ask me the code. I will not give you the code. The answer is because I want you to develop the code. And what are the all kinds of inputs, how I am doing, Everything has been recorded, how to develop this code. Everything I will give you, the complete support, hand holding will be done. But code, you have to run. If you are facing any difficulty that the code is not working, please let me know and I will tell you what, what is the error. I will try to find out the error and I will tell you the solution. But I will not give you the code directly for any of these things. But how to do, what to do, everything will be, uh, you know, everything will be discussed, hand holding will be done. But uh, I will not give you the code. You have to develop the code. You develop the code, do hundreds of mistakes. You send me the code. Uh, most probably, in most of the cases, I correct the code and I will send, I generally send it back to the parts. So I will keep the forum also open after some time so that, uh, you know, we can share our experiences in the tournament. If somebody has some difficulty, then, you know, around 120 or 110, anyone can respond. If not, then I will respond. I will respond to you. Okay, so that's it from my side. So I'll be sending you the code in another two minutes. 
and we will meet at 8:25 sharp thank you if you have any questions meanwhile you can ask because i'll be sending it will take a couple of minutes parallel i can do Yes, anyone you can ask me. Hello. Yeah, hello. Sir, why the voltage? Your voice is not audible, sir. No, your your voice is not audible, sir. hello no sir your voice is not at all is clear it is sir your voice is not clear sir Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Sir, uh, according to that, we start doing MATLAB one coding. I started. Yeah. But the problem is, uh, you taken that CPU block uh, to mention that uh, output one is current and mega. Uh, yeah. The CPU blocks yeah. are used to. Uh, uh, okay. And that time. What about power cut? Another time block you take inside the corner. I don't know much about. Uh, your your voice is not there, madam. I think either I have the network problem or I am not sure. So could you please repeat again? Could you please repeat? Uh, uh, in that whole whole, whole MATLAB sibling to us, in that uh, right uh, time box like power to block. Uh, madam, I'm sorry, your voice is not uh, audible. Can you please type that message? Then I can, I can, you know, I can. Sir, I am thinking I in the top right corner there is a clock and time. Uh, she's ah, asking okay, about that. okay, okay, that one, that one is to plot with respect to that time. If you want to plot uh, with respect to that time, so that is just to save the variables and other things. Please don't worry about that one. You just run that one and try to see what is happening in the scope. As we go, you will see why it is required. If you want the nice plots, which need to be plotted, uh, so that but that uh, variable, whatever the time, time and uh, you know current and speed, which is there, you can you can plot that one just for the plotting purpose. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Copying. So in the WhatsApp group, I will be sharing two PDF, one PDF file, and the uh, how to code that one a video as well. Mm -hmm. I have shared the video now, and I'll be sharing you the PDF file as well. 
the PDF file is uh, protected and uh, the password is Bharani GMRIT, which I will type now. I think uh, everything has been done from my side. So now you have to build this one. And I'm giving you 15 minutes time. So from now, 8.20, 8.35 will be. I hope uh, you're able to open this at lab uh, sorry that video as well. Let me check if I send the right video or something. I think it should be fine. You should directly start from seven minutes onwards. So you don't have to see you know, the story what I narrated. You should directly go to seven minutes. Meanwhile, I will try to respond to the questions what people have, uh, you know, uh, written. Password, I have already typed there for any GMR8. So it is already typed in uh, the WhatsApp group. You can see that. Huh? And somebody has written why voltage has taken as one. So I'm telling you this is a very superficial example just uh, to get hands on this one. So I've taken just one step input. So when you design the closed loop, then the reference value, whatever the reference value you are giving, it should be, you should be able to get that one. And sir, can you explain the estimation concept once again? So the estimation concepts, you know, for the next one week, we will be discussing various observers. I will again repeat then. Sir, will you please do the recording? Already recording has been sent to you. Sir, what if we implement the DI controller? DI controller. Generally, uh, along the integral and derivative control, generally nobody uses because it needs some kind of professional mechanism in that one. Uh, somebody has asked the purpose a lot of questions is asked someone uh, you know so how to choose pid constant is one such question which i will tell you how to select in one minute 
and somebody has asked professional order kd controller and other things so this uh, just to tell you that uh, all these things uh, is i cannot able to i think you have to attend ftp 3.0 where i will be uh, discussing fractional order pid jiggler nichols tuning and so on again and uh, various uh, genetic algorithm ps algorithm how to develop uh, you know for various systems so but is that is beyond the scope of this work so fundamentally here the task is for a simple system linear system how to design the pid controller so that's what we will be discussing how to choose pid constants uh, again that is the same questions which i'll be you know, discussing Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, please tell. Somebody has some question. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, I'm finding it difficult to get the uh, MATLAB 2 for the uh, for the DC motor. 
from the simulink okay. i can't pick out the uh and the screen is no longer showing on my side here i sent Hello? you already the pdf and yeah i already sent you the pdf and the videos you can see that one okay in on in the whatsapp group yeah of course in the whatsapp group i already i gave you i sent 10 minutes back it okay okay the everything okay sir yeah okay
Excuse me, sir. Yes. Yes. So, sir, uh, I'm facing the problem. The current directory, a C program files, uh, this is reserved for MATLAB files, sir. One uh, error I'm getting. No, you keep it. You keep it, that particular folder, whatever you have kept. You create one folder in desktop or somewhere else and save that particular symboling file in that one and run. It will run. Okay, okay. Directly I saved the MATLAB file on the desktop, sir. I need to save in a no, folder. You, yeah, better it you save in some folder, give some name. In that thing, okay, okay. you do it. That that I that see. will solve the most of the problem. Okay, sir. Sir. Yeah. Hello. Sir, yeah, yeah, please tell. Could we share the question in the uh, WhatsApp? Sorry, sir. Should we share? Should we post the results in the WhatsApp room? Yeah, 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 you can. Uh, but I just uh, uh, locked that one. So uh, uh, open yeah, it uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, okay. 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 Hello, sir. 
Yeah. Hello. I did the whole simulating, sir. Uh, program uh -huh. and all, but I uh, run the block. Madam, your voice is breaking. I couldn't able to. Could you please repeat it again? Run model I couldn't block. Able to... ah. In order. To... Yeah. In order to run the model, I didn't get any highlighted on the run model. You didn't get any highlighted means? Is it running or not? If you, as soon as you click the run button, run. what is happening? It's a run this code something. I, I did the decision from the simul uh, library DC block, DC motor simulating block, or from main compiler. Can you, sir, can you please open your MATLAB block and run it, sir? Where you find to simulate the model run. you read? Okay, I'll just show you this. how to run. I'm sharing my screen. You can see the screen. Okay, sir. I ran the simulation, sir. I got the output. Sir. Yeah. yeah, madam, yes, this sir. is the one you want. Is, is it visible? Uh, just a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, okay, just a minute. So this is the one. If you click this one, this one, this run button. That depends upon what version of uh, I uh, Mac you're using. Uh, run model, sir. So what my problem is, I am not getting the whole highlighted. Is not there in my block, sir, library block where I opened. What version of MATLAB you are using? 2018A. And you should be there. So this, how did you share? Could you please share your screen with me? Uh, actually, this is new laptop, sir. Because of this screen sharing is not possible. I'm not uh, cross mark on that screen sharing. Okay, Ask I will, I will just do that. Your yeah, 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 please, please, please. So what is your name? I will give you the access. Honey, sir. My laptop is honey. Okay, now you can share that one. Huh? Your screen. So this I am getting, sir. Because everything in that uh, uh, video, I think it is quite clear how it has been done and other things. But you can share your screen. And... Mm -hmm. No, 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 madam. I think uh, you have library document. I don't know what you are getting there. From where, where did you get this open one? Library. Sir, no, me. no, no. I, I think you changed the DC motor library, madam. You have to select the new one, new file. I will I will show you how to do that. I think she has. So I think she has created so a new library you... instead of a new model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I am telling you, madam. You please see this one. You had to select. If you open this one from the scratch, I will show you. Uh, you just see my, uh, you you just stop. I will I will make you to. Madam, please see. You have to select this symboling first. And blank model. This is the blank model. If you select this blank model and do it here, not in the library model. You have to select the blank model. Hello, madam. Is it uh, audible? Uh, am I audible? Okay, you had to select untitled. I mean, new symbolic model from here. Blank model, not the blank library. Blank model you have to select. 
and that will do that. Okay, so now uh, we will go to the PID controller tuning. Just give me a minute. Sir, uh, due to some network issue, I didn't respond uh, previously, sir. I resolved my problem, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay, okay. Okay, so now uh, we will go to the next part. So where we will be discussing about, uh, you know, the PID controller design. Now you have seen how to, how to, you know, build a model. Once the system is built, so what I'm saying is 95% cases, what I am going to show you now will work. But 5% cases of due to the algebraic groups or whatever it may be, it may not be working. So the first thing is what I will show you is how to develop, uh, uh, how to develop the particular uh, linearized model for this non-linear model. Because this is a non-linear model, you will not be having A, B, C, D matrices. Uh, we will see how to develop, uh, you know, the linear model that means A, B, C, D matrices. And then from there, we will, uh, we will, see how to develop the PID controller for that one. So let me share my part two video. <clears throat> so, so again, so this is, uh, this is the model. So what we have seen is, uh, uh, non-linear model so this due to this i square and this i omega we have seen that the system is uh, non-linear but now what we will do is now we will see that uh, how to linearize this model that means how to get the abcd matrices and then and then i will and then I will tell you what to do. So this is a non-linear model, what we have considered, this i and omega. So theoretically, the we will be using the Jacobian approach to find, to get the linearized ABCD matrices. So this linear model, whatever we are, we are deriving, it will only work around a particular operating point itself. So, so my, our idea is to get this non-linear model x dot and y to include this standard state space form. So A is nothing but Jacobian of X, F with respect to X, where this X bar and U bar are the operating points. So we will see what are these ones. So in this way, you will get the A, B, C, and D matrices. So this is the Jacobian approach. And uh, this is the code. Uh, I don't know whether it can, yeah. This is the small, tiny code through which uh, I have developed uh, to get the A, B, C, D matrices. Uh, the 
let me zoom this one. I have used a symbolic toolbox. I will explain this code in a minute. So, so this is the parameter P A R parameters I have defined. This symbolic, I have used the symbolic variables I omega V R L and other things. Parameters is R L, this one, and the corresponding parameter values I have defined like this. States I and omega. And state values. This is means operating points. As I told, the operating points like x bar and q bar. This is the operating points of the state values. And the state parameters. So what I have done here is I have combined uh, the state parameters with the states as well as these parameters. So now this vector will have the states i omega and all the remaining parameters. And similarly, the corresponding parameters. So the corresponding parameters of the state is state values. Parameters are parameter values. Controlled. I have used the terminology b. And this is i dot and omega dot. So this you are pretty much aware from the previous one. And I assume that my nonlinear states are i dot and omega dot. So the A Jacob is a Jacobian matrices. So I am I have to take the partial derivative of the state uh, state derivatives with respect to the state. So this is what it is happening. And then I am substituting the values, whatever the A Jacobian I am getting, just substituting the corresponding parameter values which I am calling from here. Similarly, for the B, if you see the B deals with the control, so that's why this control is coming into the picture. Uh, do you know do G by do U or so on. And uh, And this is the output. You can see that I, I assume that, that the speed of uh, my DC motor is the output zero and one. This is the equal to zero. So now what I will be getting after doing all this analysis is, so if you see this code, I will share you this PDF as well. So which no need to worry. So what is happening here is uh, I have created, this is an M file. So in, if I run this one, I'll be having the A Jacobian, B Jacobian, or the A, B, C, D matrices. Automatically, it will be saved in the workspace. So this is the one what we want, x dot equal to, if you see this one, x dot equal to A into x plus B into U, and y equal to C into x. This is a very standard one. This is the integrator x dot, I'm getting x, and then A multiplied by x, and y equal to. So here also, if you see that, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, x dot equal to A into x, plus b into u, y equal to c into x plus uh, d into u. So though d is zero in our case, just for the general representation, I have it like this. So this is my linear model. So this is the way to create uh, the linear model. So the a, b, c, d matrices, whatever is there, it is automatically coming from the workspace. And if you run, you should be able to get, uh, you know, so this is the one with the small tiny code. If you want, if you run this one, you could able to get the current and speed. This is the current and this is speed. But uh, if I want to compare how my nonlinear model and the linear model is looking like, so what I did, I just copied the my all the nonlinear model what you had done till now, and this linear model what I developed. Then I am comparing the corresponding speed current with current and speed with speed. This is the comparison of linear and nonlinear. So it looks like this. So I think the the blue one is the linear and. Uh, the red one is the nonlinear. I have to see the code. So you can see that obviously, since uh, the linearization you had you had done the linearized around the operating point of 0 0.1 and 1, and we are expecting yeah, you now the open loop is going to fourth, so that's why there is this uh, marginal error. So this is about the building of the linear model from the nonlinear model. This you have to do. But before that, I will show you how to design the PID controller, and I will wind up my session after explaining the PID controller, which is the crux of uh, uh, this presentation. And then you can do, you know, by tomorrow or whenever you, know, you can do that one. So I will I will be showing you how to design the PID controller for this linear model in one minute. So I will just uh, you know, stop the sharing first.
Okay, so I'll be sharing this one, my screen. Okay, so the one what I showed, you know, the ABCD matrices and other things, and I have included the non-zero total as well here. And uh, how to get this block PID is, until this, this is quite straightforward, how to get this PID block is you go here and type PID here, you could able to get this PID, drag it and connect it one. So you connect this one. So this looks very standard PID controller. So what is happening here is this is my speed error. The speed, sorry, the speed, sensory speed uh, is not the control. This is the reference values. So this is the reference speed. I want the reference speed to be one approximately. Uh, and then what is happening here is uh, if I this is the PID block and I kept some tuning here some value I haven't uh, ran that one so just this is the code which I have displayed in the PDF file which is still open. Yeah, this is the code which I shown you there. And if you run this one, this code, if you run this code, then you'll get all the ABCD matrices here. You can see that you know, ABCD matrices are here. So the same ABCD matrices I'll be using here. So, first of all, I will run this one. This one. Okay, so very simple case. I will show you how to tune this PID controller. I assume that you have built this one. So what is happening is x dot equal to a into x plus b into u, y equal to cx plus du. So this ABCD matrices, if you run that code, the enriched one you will be getting. So this is the reference, uh, you know, speed. This is the reference speed. I want the reference speed of one. I'm running out of the time. Let me give this as 100. I want the reference speed of 100. And uh, this is my output speed. So my reference and output speed should be the same. If you want to compare, you can use uh, the MUX. What I'll be doing here is I'll be comparing. This is my reference speed and to just make the things more clear. So this is my comparison. If you want to compare both of them, how it is looking like. This yellow one is the reference and this blue one is uh, the actual space. So now the thing comes. 
now actually i want uh, how to get this what is this inside this kd what are this games so this is what we as a control engineer everyone wants this one so if you double click this one if you double click this one these are some of the pid values so how do you get this 380 19335 1.73 3813 and this is this is a very difficult task if you manually do this one so i will show you how to do the auto tune so if you double click this matlab uh, pid block there is a this tune button if you click this tune button you have to wait for you know uh, few seconds so it will show you you know some block response like this so there are two things here this is the tune block response tune response this is a block response the block response means actual response what uh, what is system actually have and this is a tuned one so what i will show you here is what kind of pid values so you can see that this is the p value this is i value and this is d value and this is the n is the what is the filter coefficient what we have considered as 100 so these are the corresponding pid values so now the beauty you can see that if i want the settling time to be you can see that uh, already i have tuned that's why it is very fast if i want let's say there there should not be any overshoot you can see that the actual system is overshoot then what you want to do here is you try to play around with these values so what i'm doing here is if i'm changing this one so my transient behavior is changing and the corresponding kp k kds values are changing like this suppose if i want that my settling time should exactly be around 1 second settling time is 1 second and the peak overshoot is uh, you know almost zero so what i will do here is i'm just see you can see i'm dragging dra dragging i'm just dragging this one and you can see that the settling time is here you can see all these things 1.0 second and uh, 1.06 second and the overshoot is uh, and the overshoot is around 11% so i want to reduce that overshoot uh, to let us assume to 1% i want to reduce that overshoot to 1% then then what i will do here is i will just uh, change this values you can see the percentage you can see that how the overshoot is changing you can see that over overshoot is coming down coming down coming down now you can see that the overshoot is 8% and uh, this will give us the further you know whatever the response we want you can tune this one so you you just keep on dragging this one and you can get you know the desired response so now how to use so these are the pid values you don't have to manually you know use this uh, pid blocks so only the thing is if you update this one remember now you can see that kp value is 1.9553 you just update this block and as soon as if you update this block all these values you know in this pid block automatically it will change and if i run this one sir and just just a minute and if i run this one then you can see that the response like this i have run only for 0.5 second if i change to 5 and again if i am running you will get the response like this but further if you want to reduce this overshoot and so on so you have to keep on you know changing only this pid tuner which will you know which will uh, give you different yeah now everybody is asking so this pid tuner is very easy to do and corresponding all other performance and robustness you can see here what is happening gain margin pain space margin everything just by you know doing this simple tuning yeah now you can ask somebody has sent so there is a trade off here so this is the way to do the tuning hello this uh, sorry sir your voice is not at correction sir your voice is not at all clear i don't know what is uh, I, i think there is some issues with the network with you 
no 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 it is it is completely you know noisy Uh, yes sir can i ask a question yeah, yeah only two yeah. questions uh, from the so, participants so that's what the rule our rule is only two questions from a participant per day yeah yeah okay okay, okay. Uh, so fine now, this is my last question yeah this is my last question this is satya from iit bhubaneswar uh, uh, you yeah, have yeah. opened the pid control uh, pid controller block so in that you have yeah. options like uh, beside the auto tune Uh, button yeah. you have the transfer function based tuning as well as you'll have other options like discrete and continuous tuning uh, uh, continuous design yeah. of uh, pid control so can you just uh, give a gist of that yeah that depends if your plant is uh, uh, continuous or discrete that depends upon what kind of plant here we have taken the continuous plant itself but however if you want for the discretized uh, you know implementation mostly we have to go with the discrete uh, PID controller design and so on. So that that depends. We have taken the very simple continuous linear plant. So that's why that options we are selecting. If you if you want to go for the discrete, uh, if your plant is discrete and other things, you can go for it. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, yeah, yeah. can you explain me what is the role of limiter? Limiter uh, you placed uh, before to the scope. Oh, okay. Limiter is is simulator? just to. You know, okay in the physical systems uh, based upon your motor rating based upon the design it cannot go beyond certain value suppose if you are if your motor has uh, the saturation like suppose if it has designed for rating value 1500 rpm uh, maybe it can maximum it can go to plus 50% maybe around uh, 2 to 50 due to the motor's inherent uh, you know uh, the limitation you cannot expect uh, the 1500 rpm to work at 15000 rpm so here what we are doing here is here the physical whatever the limitation on the motor here i have i just kept the infinity but i can keep it you know i don't want my i know that my motor whatever you do my motor is not going to go beyond 1500 whatever whatever be you give it is not going to due to the system's limitations or the design limitation so to implicate to imply the realistic scenario here i can keep the saturation values of whatever the maximum possible extent what uh, in the realistic scenario so that saturation is the maximum value of a dc motor in general you can you don't want uh, in from the control perspective you don't want your uh, system to see if it is a current control or something you don't want your current to go beyond certain value there also you can keep the saturation uh, this is uh, intentionally i am keeping the saturation here uh, but this saturation implicates the realistic uh, the speed uh, the maximum speed limitation of a particular dc motor okay so so what i will be doing is if you have i will take one one last question today if anybody is having any any doubt otherwise uh, what is the purpose of the limiter for the scope so that is that's my answer i will share you the pdf files and i will share you the the youtube link as well so now it is your job to do you know to i will open the the discussion in the whatsapp i will give you access to everyone you can share your doubts and other things so everything is very crystal clear and uh, only the thing is be patient go through the uh, youtube every step by step everything has been explained in that one and try to sort out uh, by your own if you are not getting still you please let me know in, you share your uh, you know results or whatever the difficulties in the group the other uh, the other uh, members of the group can respond if not then i will find you just so is there anything else to discuss uh if not i will share you uh, i will share you the youtube links and other things before that i will i'm just sharing you one feedback link it will hardly take you a couple of minutes all of you please fill this one once i get the feedback response then i will share you the two set of videos uh one uh the video for the pid controller design and the pdf as well i will share you in another 15 minutes by 9:30 i will share you so so that's it uh, from my side so this is so this is the kind of fundamental things required for although it is not directly required for the fdp 2.0 but i still thought to give you some fundamental knowledge about the pid control design which may be useful for your future
so if you use any kind of one more thing i'm saying is it is uh, if you use any kind of genetic algorithm pso neural network this thing that thing any optimization gain finally you will be getting only this pa kp ki kd values and that kp ki kd values i have shown you how to get within a minute so practically saying you don't want uh, you know all those superficial uh, uh, advanced uh, artificial intelligence ai algorithms unless your system is very complex or you know you cannot able to do by this auto tuning then one can go for it but as i am telling 90% of, of the linear systems you can 90 95% you can use this pid tuner in one minute you will get the desired response so that's what uh, i want to say so if you have anything uh, another couple of minutes i'll be there and then i will be you know leaving this time. so please fill this form uh, feedback form what i sent to you now i'll be there for one minute and then i'll be leaving i will send you the pdf file and as well as the youtube uh, you know demos okay thank you very much so you please uh, fill the uh, feedback form once i receive from you then i'll be sharing my uh, the pdf sir? as well as the video link okay sir yeah sir while running the matlab file what uh, matlab file we did uh, in that i found a diagnostic viewer like some errors sir the... what is the error have you followed exactly function. what has been this yeah have you followed exactly what has been defined how it has been done in the youtube video yes sir, yes, sir. i think i followed the whole the uh, then what i suggest is then yeah that's what that's what i what i suggest is please go through the video one more time try one more yes, time sir. still if you're not getting yes, please uh, you know uh, because this is yes, the phase sir. where one has to uh, one has to you know uh, work very hard otherwise as we keep on going it will become difficult so debugging is very important try go through the video one more time you try to run take some time if still if you are not getting to send me then i will i will tell you what is the problem okay, okay. thank you okay thank you very much i am ending this session sorry that uh, i have exceeded by 12 minutes so i am just ending okay. bye